Now it's time for another Board Game Brawl preview with Nick Meenahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey now, my name is Nick, this is Board Game Brawl, and today we're going to be taking a look at a game that is currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. That game is called Wolf and Hound, and it's from Ninja Star Games. Now, if you like what you see throughout the rest of this preview video, I'm going to encourage you to go to the official Kickstarter project page. You can click on the link up in the top corner of your screen, and also down in the description section of the video, that's going to take you to the official Kickstarter page, find out more information than I could possibly tell you here, and hopefully you'll consider backing the project. Now, what is Wolf and Hound. This is a competitive two versus two team game. One team of players is trying to force the other team of players to lose all of the sheep from their pasture. If one person on one of the teams loses all of their sheep and they run off into the dark woods because of the foul wolves who are running around from pasture to pasture, then the other team is automatically going to win. Now it's also possible that one player on one of the teams is going to run out of cards to play and at that point the game is also going to end and you'll figure out who has the most and the least sheep in their pastures. Uh, you have different cards that you play to move around the hounds and the sheep from uh, board to board, mechanically speaking. And there's also some special blue cards, tornado effects, that may just mess everything up. But you have to use all these different things to your advantage in order to come out over your opponents. Let me go ahead and give you a brief look at how the game is played with a prototype version of the game. So what you see here may not be final in the final published version of the game, then we're going to come back, I'll give you my final thoughts. Alright, let me give you a brief overview of Wolf and Hound. This is a competitive team game. The goal of the game is to eliminate all of the sheep from the pasture of one player on the opposing team. So, if every sheep in one opponent's pen is out into the dark forest, they've been chased away into the dark forest by the wolves, then the other team is going to win the game. So, first, set up at the beginning of the game, you're going to have uh, these numbered cards indicating players um, one, two, three, and four. Players one and players three are going to be on the same team. So you're gonna shuffle up these cards, deal them out, and that will determine your seating order and also uh, who you're sitting uh, opposite from and who your teammate is. Uh, then you have players uh, four and you've got player two. They will be on the same team as well. Remember the goal is just to eliminate one of your opponent's team members. Each player gets a uh, player board, which you're going to stick next to the, uh, to the main board, uh, just like so, just so that it's easily accessible from everyone to, because cards are going to be uh, moving around, and you need to make sure you're keeping track of who they are affecting. Uh, but every player is also going to get three sheep tokens, which they are going to keep in their little constructed pen on their player board. Every player also gets a hand of four numbered cards. The numbered cards go from one to four and they come in white and black varieties and all the other cards are going to uh you'll shuffle them up deal them out and then all the rest of the cards are going to go on the center of the player uh, the main player board finally you have to set up the wolf and hound cards and there are different variant setups that you can use uh, when you're setting up this stack of cards if for the beginning game you might just have a wolf and a hound card but then as you get into advanced uh, gameplay you're going to use a few extra ones so for instance let me just go ahead and show you these um, these each do different things when they affect you and we'll get to all that in a minute but hound cards for instance are going to chase sheep back into your pen so they heal you in other words remember you lose the game if you run out of sheep if they run off into the dark woods so getting them back into your pen can be very important the opposite of that is the wolf card which is going to chase your sheep away obviously sometimes you're going to have these blue cards which are special effect cards um, that will make you uh, skip your turn for instance that's what this blue tornado card does. Uh, then you have the metamorph cards, which are double-sided cards. Uh, as you can see, it says you flip this card over before passing to the start player. So on this side, it's a hound card, but then it can become a wolf card, and then it can flip back over again. So these are the different types of things you can add into the deck in order to uh, 
give it some variety. You're going to have whatever cards you choose to use, they are all going to start off in front of the first player, who is also taking the first turn of the game. Although, the first phase of every turn is going to be the Wolf and Hound phase. You're going to skip that for player one during the first turn of the game. However, if you were having this phase, like in any other turn except for the first turn, then at the start of your turn, you are going to be subject to the effects of these cards. So if it is the Hound card, then you get to heal a sheep from the Dark Woods. But if it's a Wolf card, you're going to have to lose one of the sheep. The, the Tornado card does some wacky things. In this case, you have to skip your turn, and then you have to move it on the next player's turn. And it will tell you how you should move it, although it moves with speed of half, depending on what the card's uh, value is and then the uh, if it's one of the metamorph cards you will follow the same rules of whatever side it's currently on um, if those are going to switch so every turn except for the first turn those are the types of things that you're going to have to worry about then it moves on to the second phase which is checking for the game ending condition because it, even if someone loses all of their sheep during phase one which is the wolf and hound phase they're not out of the game yet they still have until the end of that phase to fix that situation but if they can't and you get to phase two that's it it's game over one of the two teams is going to win by default then you go on to phase three and phase three is playing one of the numbered cards from your hand. When you play a numbered card, it is going to move every card of every wolf and hound card of the same type, the same color, uh, the appropriate number of spaces. So if I play this uh, black or dark colored two, then I'm going to move every one of the uh, hound cards that's face up, which in this case is none, but let's say that I had had the... Uh, Oh, it's just the uh, wolf card, the, uh, not the metamorph cards. Uh, so this one's going to move two spaces around over to this player. Now, at the bottom of the cards, there's actually little arrows that will tell you um, who this, which player this is actually going to affect. So if the card, the arrow is pointing down, that's going to affect you, the player that it is currently in front of. But it could also affect the players to the left and the right. Now, that's actually a bad situation because this is my fellow teammate over here. But let's say that I had played, uh, instead of the uh, black card there, I had just played the one uh, white card. That means that all of these uh, hound cards would move on to the next player. And while they might heal my opponent, he hasn't lost any sheep anyway, so it's not a huge deal. Now, I do have a wolf card in front of me, which means if it's like that, at the end of my uh or the start of my next turn then i'm in trouble but my teammate could help me out by playing one of the uh the black cards and moving it away before my turn comes back around and i have to deal with the first phase of play and the last phase of the game is simply drawing a card from the deck now if a player runs out of cards at any point that will also end the game in addition to a player being eliminated. If that's the case, then everyone's going to count up their sheep and whoever has, whichever team has the uh, least sheep is going to be the loser and the other team is going to be the winner. Uh, but the main point I want to hit on is that the wolf and hound are going to be moving around constantly during the course of the game. And when they are in front of a player, they're going to activate. You'll lose sheep, you'll gain sheep, you'll have to take the effects of the blue cards as well which are actually going to activate first. So let's say that it gets back around to my pl uh, to my player one, and the wolf is still in front of me, so unfortunately that means I'm going to... I would lose a sheep, however, the blue tornado happens first. So this says skip your turn and uh, move on the next player's turn. So I have to skip the rest of my turn at this point. And if it's the metamorph cards, then... When uh, it's about to pass over back to the star player, it's going to flip over to its opposite side, which might be going from hound to wolf or wolf to hound and uh, vice versa. And uh, that's basically the game. You're going to be moving these cards around back and forth, trying to put them into advantageous positions to keep the wolves away from you or to keep the hounds on you in order to heal yourself from previous damage and put the wolves in front of the, your opponents just when it's about to hit them and also use the blue sort of wild cards to your advantage whenever possible. That is a quick run through of Wolf and Hound. Let's get to my final thoughts. 
Actually, before we move on, I just want to show you a few of the other advanced cards that you can play with uh, from the Wolf and Hounds deck. For instance, you have this Hound card here this, uh, that reverses the turn order if another card is in the same area when it's in front of you. This Wolf card targets yourself and both players on your left and right, whereas these other cards target only the players on your left and right, respectively. And there's this other blue card that forces you to not be able to play a card value of three. So I just wanted to show you those to show you some of the other options that you have in the game. Now let's get to my final thoughts. First and foremost, Wolf and Hound has a very charming theme. Together with its charming artwork, these things really work well together to make this a family style game. Uh, but then when you get into the gameplay, there's enough strategic bite there for anyone. But First and foremost, this is going to be a great game to get casual gamers into it and to also just really appreciate that theme, which is, you know, it's fun, it's good for kids, it's good for really anyone in that regard. Um, and it does really have this quirky, char charming artwork uh, style to it. Moving on to the gameplay, you it's interesting because you can play with any setup of the Wolf and Hound cards that you want, which means that you can do a very basic game just to get the, the rules under you and to try to figure out, okay, uh, this is what happens when I play the white cards, when I play the black cards, and oh, here's the sort of nuances of the game as you continue to play, like what do I need to do in order to uh, get bad cards away from me, to get the wolf card not on uh, my board or in front of my board at the start of my turn, but get it onto someone else's as well, or make sure I can strategically move the hound in front of mine too. Then, after you've played the game for a little bit and you kind of have those type of things under you, then you go to uh, using some of the other interesting cards, like the Tornado cards, which could really uh, just throw a wrench into things, but it's another sort of obstacle that you could also potentially use to your advantage. And then, of course, the, uh, the Metamore cards, which are going to um, really be interesting because every time they pass around, they'll flip over to a different side, which is another thing that you have to worry about and take into account. Not to mention the speed bonuses and modifiers, which will happen during the course of the game, depending on which side they're going to be flipped on, which can modify the cards that you play from your hand as well. So that's the interesting thing about this game is that it is very easy to learn. It's very easy to get into and it's very easy to teach to other players. But at the same time, once everyone gets those rules down and really knows what the core rules of the game are, you can start adding in these other little elements that flip things up and just uh, make it just a little bit more difficult. But there, add more gamerly gamer elements to it and make it more interesting, make it give it just a little bit more strategic bite to it. So the game is easily modifiable depending on the group of gamers that you are engaged with, which is not something that a lot of games can say. And when you add it together with that theme, with the components, with the artwork, with the presentation, and with the two versus two team play, it definitely becomes the type of casual game that uh, a lot of different people from all different gaming walks of life can really get into. And if you're the type of person that this game appeals to, I would definitely encourage you to go to the official Kickstarter page and find out even more information. You can click on the icon up in the top corner of the screen, and you can also uh, click down in the description section of the video there will be a link down there those things are going to take you to the official kickstarter page find out more information and hopefully consider backing wolf and hound from ninja star games thank you so much for watching take care thanks for watching follow us on facebook twitter and patreon and make sure to check out our sponsor board game bliss where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world boardgamebliss.com thanks for your support